reminds us of God. Because the gold reminds us of the string of gold in heaven, and that's where God is. And God's the one who made heaven, and he made the earth, and made everything on the earth. And there's something that he made that he loves the most, and that is each of you. He made you, and because he made you, he loves you very much. But something we also know about God is that he is holy. That means that he's perfectly good in every way. And because he's holy and in his heaven, there can be no sin in heaven. And that's what the dark part reminds us of, is that we all have sin. We all have, were born without want to, to do our own thing and go our own way. No punching up for
to die on the cross for us. Help us to grow to know them better. And tell other people about Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.
verse 13, and Jesus is speaking here. Again, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. The Word of God says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salt? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we do thank you today that the anchor does hold. And Lord, no doubt, there are some folks here today that may be going through some storms in life. There are things going on in their lives. And Lord, so often uh, we bring much of this upon ourselves. And so, Father, I pray today as we preach your word, as we talk about being the salt of the earth, that, Lord, you would press upon our hearts what you would have for us today. And, Lord, just uh, we just lift every individual, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every teenager present today up to you, Lord. Speak to their hearts, we pray, during these moments. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> When you order grits at a restaurant, often the grits will be without salt. Any of you ever gone to a restaurant and the grits don't have salt in it? Very often that will be uh, the case. And uh, I ate a baked potato last night and I found myself adding a lot of salt. It's saying, well, in this verse, Jesus tells us to be. Ye are the salt of the earth. Why would Jesus use salt here? Today, salt seems to only be missed whenever none can be found for the fries or something that you may be eating to season your food. But back then, salt was very valuable. The word in which we have salary, your income, literally means salt money. Salt money. Salt was given in rations, and it was very important. And by calling us salt, Jesus is saying we are important, that we are valuable, and there are some striking parallels today that we can make between salt, between salt and Christians, you and I. For the next few minutes, I want us to look at some of the uses of salt and compare them to our own Christian walk. Examine your life to see if you are indeed the salt of the earth as Jesus has commanded you to be. I think we have a slide uh, back there. Uh, as well. The first point that we want to make is that salt is used on icy roads. And uh, we're going to go through each one of these uh, quickly. We rarely get snow or sleet or ice storms around here, but we did get a couple uh, this year, January and February. But whenever we do, the highway department pours salt on the roadways and the bridges and salt aids in chemically breaking down the ice. And as Christians, you and I should aid to break down the coldness in this world. We do not have to look far today to see that people are cold towards Almighty God. George Barn, a recognized research guru, recently warned Christians that atheists are the new evangelists. You see, atheists are doing more to bring people into their ideas and their way of life than Christians are in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the past few years, some of the best-selling books have been God-bashing publications. A book called The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins sold 500,000 copies in one year alone. That means that every day, 1,370 copies were being picked up, were being purchased by the public. And not only with books, but TV personalities criticized and scorned Christianity, while multitudes of Americans seem to applaud their efforts each and every day. But Psalm chapter 14, verse 1 has said, The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. With attacks on God's word that we see today and the attacks that are rampant in our own neighborhoods, not just in places like San Francisco, not just in large metropolitan cities, but gross and shameful sins occurring in our own neighborhoods today. Nay, not just our neighborhoods, but horrific and unimaginable sins occurring in our own households today. I ask you and I ask myself, where are the salty people? I submit to you this morning that not only does America need more salt today, but chances are great that the households that make up you and Springs Baptist Church need more salt. They do. Desperately need more salt today. Your home and my home, if you were to walk into them, seem to be much like the home of the godless with the activities that go on there. There is no prayer time. They're vulgar and obscene television. Programs with suggestive things that are played over and over for young ears and young eyes to see and to hear. May God have mercy on us. Where is the salt? Where is the salt? The Christian home today. 
walking into it is no different than the home of the non-Christian. The same television programs being played, recorded, profanity, vulgar, <coughs> the things, sexual things, and so forth. It's there. The Christian home. Where is the salt in the Christian home? Where is the salt? As the anti-God movement grows stronger and stronger, we seem to welcome and even enjoy it as a culture. And I'm talking about professing Christians. <coughs> I'm not talking about worldly people. I'm not talking about people that are following the devil. I'm not talking about unsaved people. I'm talking about people that claim to be a Christian. I'm talking about people that claim to be on the way to heaven. I'm talking about people that claim to follow Christ. That's who I'm talking about. We're buying the same addictive products on the shelves that the world buys. We're watching the same lustful television that the world does. We're engaged in the same corrupt speech that the world is. Where is the sanctification? Where is the holiness? Where is the salt? Where is the salt? Several of us, you know, first thing you that went to Camp McCall in the last few days, we got back yesterday afternoon. While our boys were up at the Christian camp on that mountain, we had a wonderful time, by the way, very spiritual time up there. The ungodly sent their children to a new national network of camps created especially for the development of ideas to question the existence of God, to indoctrinate children, to reject God. So there are now camps that are anti-God. Children go. Parents send their children to learn more about ways to question God. They are not indoctrinated to reject God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Perhaps if more of us, perhaps if you, perhaps if I were more serious about serving Christ, if more of us were obeying Jesus' command to be the salt, then maybe we would be doing what God has called us to do, to be salt and break down the coldness in this world. I wonder this morning, are you doing that? You doing that today. Secondly, and we're moving quickly now. Salt prevents decay. Prevents decay. Back then, there were no ice machines or refrigerators, so to preserve meat, they would rub salt into the meat so that it would not spoil. Our society today, I don't have to tell you, it's right. It's decay. Marriages are falling apart. Children are becoming more disobedient and disrespectful, and the family is collapsing. But there's a remedy for this decay. This is the remedy right here. Amen? This is the remedy. I wonder, are we in the Word of God? Parents, your children need you to show them the way. Not tell them the way. They need you to show them the way. I wonder, are you doing that? There are many things that are influencing our children today. 1 Thessalonians 2.12 says that you walk worthy of God who have called you into His kingdom and glory. I wonder, does that describe you? You walk worthy of your call. Are you influencing your children and grandchildren by walking worthy of God? How about it, Healing Springs? Are the people of this church in the community, are you preserving this community from rot? I tell people all the time, strong churches make strong neighborhoods. And if, and if this church starts to go down, I tell you, this Healing Springs community will go right along with it. Strong churches build strong communities. And of course, we know that strong Christian homes build strong churches. We see neighborhoods all across Barnwell, Bamberg County, Orangeburg, all around us that are becoming less and less salty with drugs infiltrating the areas and so forth coming in. I wonder, is the neighborhood, the street that you live on, is it right? Is it decaying? Is your area, I don't know where, I know where most of you live, but I feel sure that probably, you know, here, I'll just have you raise your hands. As far as you know, do you believe that there are probably someone using drugs on your road somewhere, in your area, within a mile of your house? I'm sure most of us, and some of us may not be aware, of it, and they are. So I wonder if that describes your area, your neighborhood. Jesus is telling you to be the salt of your area. Be the salt of your neighborhood. Be ye the salt. Jesus could be saying, you're the salt of healing springs. You're the salt of the community you live in. You're the salt of the road that you live on. Is the place that you work today, is it decaying in sin? Is your home right away? Give them 
soft. Kim's soft. Pass the soft. Pass the soft. That's what we need to do. We need to pass the salt to those who so desperately need it. Thirdly, salt heals wounds. It heals wounds. We've already said that humanity is rotten. People are wounded. People are hurting. They need healing. And those around us need Christians to help them heal. We need to remember that Jesus did not say, you're the sugar of the earth. He didn't say that you're the sugar of the earth. He said that you're the salt of the earth. And there's a difference. See, salt stings wounds, doesn't it? It stings. And God's people are around those who are raw. You and I are around people every day who are raw towards God. They're raw. And so the Christian's presence will hurt to the ungodly people. You see, the man or woman without God has an open wound. And when you are near, especially if you're living righteously as God has called you to, then your righteous life will irritate that wound. It will irritate that individual perhaps cause them pain. Again, you and I are sure. Lives are changed. Souls are saved. Homes are rescued from disaster. Broken hearts are mended. Sorrows are eased and burdens are lifted. When the Holy Spirit works through God's people, the soul of the earth. I wonder about you. There are those who are counting on you today. All of you have different family makeups, different situations in your lives, but there are people that are counting on you today to be the salt, to be the salt. There may be someone around you right there on the pew, I don't know, who's wounded. Might the Lord fill this church with His love and shake you out to meet the needs of this congregation and the community in which you reside. Fourth, salt adds flavor. It adds flavor. If you were to look for a recipe book, scan through it, you would find that many recipes require salt as an ingredient. How many of you, I know Miss Peggy does a lot of cooking. Do you use salt a pretty good bit in, your, in some of your food, Miss Peggy? I, I know you do. And everybody here, part. Todd, do you use some salt in your cooking sometimes? All the time. All the time. All right. Uh, we, we use a lot of salt. And it's required in a lot of ingredients. It adds flavor to our food. You see, Christians in a similar way should add flavor to the world. When you're around, it should add flavor to where it is. But however, we sort of have it backwards today. The world is influencing the church more than the church is influencing the world. Isn't that right? We all. And so, well, I want to tell you this morning, and, and they make a lot of that stuff like a... a imitation salt, but it's just not the same. There, there is no room on God's shelf for imitation salt today. I'm going to tell you, there's no room on His shelf for imitation salt. You need to be the salt. You need to be the real deal, not an imitation. Not an imitation, like imitation salt. So, the church will see more conversions if we study the Bible and if we strive to follow Jesus instead of the ways of the world. Amen? We would. As Saul, we should flavor the world around us. And you can't flavor the world by continuing to drink a few beers with the regulars, by listening to and spreading telephone gossip each and every day, or by hanging out in the bars. We must be different. We have to be different. Philippians 1.27 says, Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. We must be different. The average unsaved person Believes that being a Christian would be too boring, too dull, or tasteless to, to live the Christian life. They think that our lives as a Christian is just full of bland rules. That's what they think. However, Jesus called you and me to be the salt. It's the mashed potatoes that don't have salt in them that are bland, not us. In reality, it's the unsaved person that is leading the dull life. Who is on that never-ending quest to find some fulfillment, some purpose in life. And so the life is so bland going from here to there. They're never satisfied. Joy and I were talking last night. I'm enjoying my life today more than I ever have 
has given me purpose in life. God has given me value in life. And when I finally surrendered to Him, He gave me fulfillment in life. He showed me the direction to go. And I'm happier. I'm more joyful than I've ever been before. And I want you to know this morning that God loves you, each and every one of you. From the youngest to the oldest and all in between. God loves you. He has a plan for you. And until you line up in God's will and follow His plan for your life, you will be searching each and every day. So you need to just go ahead and surrender. I want to tell you and every other Christian that's here today that has walked down that same path that some of you are walking this morning will tell you, that life never satisfies. It never satisfies. Is it fun at times? Yes, the Bible tells us that sin is pleasurable, but for a season, for a short while. For a short while. So you may be enjoying it today, but you will never find satisfaction. If you're looking for happiness, if you're looking for fulfillment, you won't find it in this world. You'll only find it in Jesus Christ. And I hope some of you little boys and girls, some of you teenagers, if you're walking down the wrong path, that you will find Christ soon and very soon. And not waste all these years chasing after the world. So, as Christians, let's have a flame. Let's have a pain. Let's have a zest about us in life. So far we've said that salt melts coldness. We've said that salt prevents decay. we said that salt heals wounds. we said that salt adds flavor. Fifth, salt is small, unimpressive, unnoticed. You know, picture this and just for your mind for this moment. Close your eyes for just a second. I want you to picture something in your mind. Picture yourself seated at a dining table, perhaps at a restaurant somewhere. In front of you is a 12-ounce juicy steak, cooked to perfection the way that you like it. And on top of that steak might be a few onion rings, I don't know. And then beside that steak is a large loaded baked potato, butter, sour cream, cheese, bacon. A fresh salad is also there. And you've ordered a delicious slice of chocolate cake for dessert. Can you picture that in your mind for just a moment? This spread in front of you. I know you're hungry. We're getting close to the end. So, uh, <laughs> during your dining experience, you can open your eyes now. During your dining experience, the food, the steak, the potato, the dessert, is sort of the focus of the meal rather than the salt. Most staples have salt shakers, salt and pepper shakers on them. But we sort of don't notice the salt, but it's there. Salt has probably been rubbed on the steak, it's been put on the baked potato, but it quietly goes unnoticed. And you see, the true disciple of Christ, usually, not always, but the true disciple of Christ usually receives little recognition in a world whose values are completely the opposite. So when Jesus said, be the salt, you won't always be noticed. You won't be the, the spotlight on the table. You won't be what everyone is just digging into all the time. But you are there. You be the salt. You be the salt. You won't always be noticed. Might not seem like much to the world sometimes, but you be the salt of the earth. Here, and I promise you, the Lord has promised us that if you'll be the salt here, He will welcome you at His table on that day. And what a wonderful table. And what a wonderful spread that will be one day. So, six, salt also is a product of work. Of work. When we work hard, we sweat, don't we? We perspire. How many of you have worked, I, I'm just curious, how many of you have worked hard enough recently to sweat doing something? Anybody? Anybody sweated lately? We're in the summer months. I'm good. Have you ever had Maybe the sweat to, to drip down your brow and maybe get on your lip and you, I mean, you probably didn't intentionally taste it, but you tasted the, the sweat and it was what? It tasted salty. It tasted salty. Well, salty Christians, we're going to be working hard for the Lord and serving Him, making each day count for Christ, making an impact. Romans 12, 11 says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So I wonder, does that describe you? When is the last time, you know, we just said we sweat. When is the last time that you sweat for the Lord? When's the last time you did that? You may have sweat cutting grass. You may have sweat changing the oil in your car. You may have sweat going for a walk on exercise. But have you ever sweat in service for Jesus Christ? If not, perhaps you're slow in business today. Are you making each day count for Christ? See, that's all that's going to matter in the end. 
It's not going to matter uh, how often you cut your grass. It's not going to matter how much money you work each and every day and padded up your bank account. And all that's going to matter is that you make each and every day count for Jesus Christ. That's all that will matter to you. Nothing else will. So if you're going to sweat, if you're going to labor, labor for the Lord. Labor for the Lord. Seventh, and finally, and I don't think this one's on here, but salt makes you thirsty. Salt makes you thirsty. If we brought, if I had a bag of pretzels and a bag of ball peanuts up here, and, and uh, we know Mr. Joe, we put salt in ball peanuts, don't we? Yeah, he, he, we put salt in a ball of peanuts. It would not be long when, before we, we needed something to drink if we were eating those pretzels and, and eating those ball peanuts. But the question we need to ask ourselves is, do I, do I make people thirsty for Christ? When people are around me, do they become thirsty? For Jesus Christ. If we had a bowl of soup up here, it would only take one bite to see if it's been salted or not, to especially to our flavor. So I wonder, when people take a bite of you, do they taste Christ? Do they taste Christ? If we're living as we should, then people should become thirsty and want to take a drink from the well of everlasting water that only Jesus can provide. Someone has said live, so that when people speak evil of you, that no one will believe it. I wonder. If a vicious rumor were spread about you all of a sudden, would folks believe it? Or would they say, no way that he would do that? No way that she would ever be involved in that. No way. If you're living for Christ, then others will see what you have, and they will want it too. They will. I wonder, has anyone ever approached you and recognized the song? Now, in conclusion, I want you to notice three words in Matthew 5, 13 as we conclude here. 5, 13. Kind of in the middle of the verse. Let me get that up there. Do y'all see? See what that says right here? Good for nothing. Good for nothing, it doesn't. Three words. Good for nothing. After becoming a Christian, sometimes people lose their salty flavor. And they become, as Jesus said, good for nothing. They're still saved. They're still on the way to heaven. They have not lost their salvation, but they're no longer living for Him. They're no longer useful in building up the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Instead of serving Him, they're now serving the world. Instead of setting their affections on things above, they hold tight to the things of this earth. As we've looked at several uses of salt, salt melts colds, bitterness. Salt prevents decay. Salt heals wounds. Salt adds flavor. Salt comes from hard work. And salt makes you thirsty. As a Christian, are you obeying Christ's command? be the salt of the earth. If Jesus were here this morning, if Jesus were here this morning, would he say, you are the salt of the earth? Or would he say, you're good for nothing when it comes to my kingdom? I want you to know something this morning. I've got news for you. He is here today. He is here. And what is he saying to you deep within your heart? Are you the salt of the earth? Or are you good for nothing right now? Are you making a difference in this world for Christ? Dedicate your life to Jesus. Yes, the salt often seems unnoticed. Small, but how important salt is to us. Once you add flavor to this world, be a preservative of righteousness. Melt the coldness around you. Heal wounds. Show people the thirst quencher that Jesus Christ is. And work hard for Christ. The bottom line is this, if you forget everything else, uh, this is the bottom line of it all. Today, every Christian is either influencing this world, you're influencing the people around you as salt for Christ, or you're good for nothing. The world is influencing you. You're either influencing others, or the world is influencing you. Which one is it? Which is it in your life? The wonderful thing, if you say, well, you know, Jeffrey, when I first got saved, when I first walked to church out five years ago, I was excited. I did get involved in some things. But here recently, I sort of got in the way. I, I haven't been influencing anybody for Jesus Christ. In fact, the world's been influencing me more and more than I've been influencing the world. And I want you to know something. If you're one of those individuals, God loves you and God will forgive you. All you have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I haven't been serving you the way that I should. And when we sin, we don't become second class Christians. We're still on the plane in the first class. And He will forgive you. And you can go out and say, I'm sorry, Lord, I have not been the salt that you called me to be. But He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted?
it stands for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. I wonder, are you the salt of the earth today or good for nothing? This is the time to get it right and get right with God. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, thank you for these moments sharing your word. Be the salt of the earth. Father, I wonder as your Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, as your all-seeing mind and eye looks deep into our hearts, beyond the flesh and bones, into our hearts. Lord, if we were to be truthful with you today, have we been influencing the world for you and being the salt of the earth, or has the world been influencing us and we've been good for nothing lately? Help us to ask ourselves this question. And Lord, if, if we have been influenced by the world, Lord, help us to admit, confess, and say, I'm sorry, Lord, I have not been the salt that you've called me to be, that you've commanded me to be. Lord, help me to do that from this day forward. Lord, should there be a man, woman, teenager, boy, or girl that's never trusted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, Father, we pray for them that this moment they would come forward. Or should there be someone here that might just want to come and rededicate their life? Or they realize that they haven't been with it the way that they should have been involved in doing some things that they should have. In fact, Lord, they've been watching the same programs that the world watches. They've been talking like the world, dressing like the world, looking like the world. And Lord, you, you've called us to not be conformed to the world, but to be transformed, to be an example. And Lord, if we haven't been an example for you, if we haven't been so, Lord, help us, convict us. Now help us to change our ways. And Lord, we realize we can only do that in you and with you. Lord, bless this time of invitation, we pray in Jesus' name.